A painting by a guy named David Hockney just broke a record. I want to show you this short clip from CNN. Let's take a look and then I'll comment on it. two photographs on my floor and they were just lying there and I put them together and they're just small and then I but I got the idea for the painting from from that the swimming pools I always uh, loved I mean all the wiggly lines they make if you photograph them, it freezes them. Whereas if you use paint, you can have wiggly lines that wiggle. That painting sold in 1972 for about $20,000, which I thought it was a lot of money at the time, but within six months it was sold again for fifty thousand dollars. Within six months, and uh, so Andre realised the pictures were underpriced. Uh, a lot had been underpriced. Now, call me an asshole, but I want to live in a world where the most expensive painting ever sold is like maybe $100,000, which I already think is absolutely insane. Spending $100,000 on a painting is like, what? You know what? I'll be fair. I like how this is fair and I'm going up in that number. I wish I lived in the in a world where the most expensive painting sells for one million dollars. And again, even then, I'm going to look at that person like, yo, what are you doing? And listen, it's a beautiful painting. I like the painting. I like it a lot. Um, is it worth 90 million dollars? I can't believe I even have to like say those words. Those words are coming out of my mouth. $90 million. So, um, hey, just some totally unrelated facts on the state of the country right now. 39% of Americans, only 39% of Americans can afford a $1,000 emergency. The overwhelming majority of Americans cannot afford a $1,000 emergency. 76% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. And nearly 30 million Americans don't have health insurance. Now you can say, uh, hey man, that's a non sequitur. Is it? Is it? I don't know. You tell me. I think um, there are so many examples of stories where the only logical conclusion is perhaps... In a civilized society, like every other civilized society that ever existed, ever, redistribution of wealth is not inherently a bad thing. Perhaps it's actually a common sense thing. Now, the question isn't, should we allow redistribution of wealth or should we not allow redistribution of wealth? The question is, to what extent do we allow it? Everybody agrees with it to a certain extent. Just to build roads and have cops, there is some redistribution of wealth happening there through taxes. You know, my take is we should perhaps tax the rich a little more than we do now and take that money and put it towards things that everybody agrees are moral, ethical goals, like giving everybody health care and um, giving everybody a living wage and free college so they don't have to go into massive amounts of debt in order just to improve their lives. Now, some people will look at that and call me a radical for proposing this belief system but, or the, these policies, but I actually think that I'm the moderate and I'm the centrist. 
I think I'm, I, and the polls show this, I'm right smack dab in the middle of the will of the American people. And the people who oppose what I'm saying and are against raising taxes on the rich, they're in the minority. 58% of Americans want to raise taxes on the rich. So perhaps I'm not the radical, perhaps you're the radical if you disagree with this, and perhaps there's something inherently radical about uh, $90 million paintings casually being bought and sold at the same time that we have people who are living in extreme poverty and are working full-time jobs but not making enough money to survive.